right. Hello and welcome to episode 56 of the Roadie Rumble podcast. Today we have a very special guest. It is ABC7 Eyewitness News sports anchor Ryan Field. Ryan, thank you so much for taking the time again. How are you today? Good, man. Great to be here. Thanks for having me on. It means a lot. Thank you. Thank you for joining me. Um, a question that I love to start with on this podcast is just really, you know, what motivates you? What is your why? Boy, it's a great question. My why is to, um, you know, it's the why I get out of bed every day is you just want to wake up and be good at what you do and have fun doing it along the way and, and live every life, live, live every day uh, like it's your last. And, um, you know, with this job, there's always a certain level of excitement being live on TV every day that kind of adds some excitement uh, to your life uh, on a daily basis. So you kind of get that high um, 24 seven, basically. So it, it makes it easier to get out of bed and do what you love to do. And, um, you know, the goal I, I always tell everybody is you want to find something that doesn't feel like work and in a job like this, it doesn't feel like work because I get to talk about sports all day and, uh, it, it's, it's not a bad way to live. And, um, but again, like anything else, it's all in what you make of it. And I try to make the most of it every day. Yeah. That's, I mean, great advice. I always say like, you'll never work a day in your life if you, uh, you know, love do what you love. Doing. Right. Exactly. Exactly. So, <laughs> um, hundred percent, hundred percent. And I feel like that's definitely advice that I, you know, carry with me. That's kind of mentality that I carry with me, you know, every recording that I have, every podcast I record or, you know, every broadcast that you have, cause it really just doesn't feel like work. It's not, you know, sitting there from nine to five, you know, you're kind of always on the move. You're always up on your feet. Um, you're not in an office, just kind of, you know, dealing with numbers all day. You're really right. out there in the field and, you know, learning about different people, you know, talking to different people and learning about different things. So I definitely admire that. And that's, you know, obviously something that I definitely want to get into as well. Love it, man. Yeah. I mean, it, and that's, those are all good reasons to want to get into this line of work. And I tell people that no one day is ever the same as the one before. And that also adds another level of intrigue and excitement to your daily day-to-day uh, -day work life. So um, if this is the career path you've chosen, I can promise you, you won't regret it. Yeah, absolutely. So you're originally from uh, Troy, Michigan, and I'm curious, you know, what your relationship with sports was from a young age and, you know, how you knew you wanted to pursue a career in this industry. Yeah, I mean, basically in high school, I was, I quickly found out that I was not good enough to play sports uh, at the collegiate level, let alone, or the high school level, let alone the collegiate level. Uh, so I said, well, if I want to get involved in sports, I'm going to have to get involved in another way. So I became the sports editor at my school paper for four years, uh, then went on to Michigan State and did some radio and TV work on campus, fell in love with TV, and I've been doing it ever since. This is my 25th year in the business. So it's been, uh, it's been a wild ride. I've seen a lot, covered a lot, talked to a lot of amazing athletes. And, uh, you know, like I said, there's, there's no job like it. I love what I do, and I'm blessed to be able to say that. Yeah, absolutely. Can you go in a little bit deeper on, you know, some of the things that you did uh, at Michigan State, um, you know, maybe share some of the experiences that you've had during your time? Yeah, so, um, you know, when people always ask me, you know, where should I go to school at, I always tell them that you want to go to a place that uh, has opportunities for you, not only on campus, but also neighboring television stations that you can get internships at. And in East Lansing, Michigan, um, which is just outside the capital of Lansing, Michigan, is where Michigan State University resides. And when I was on campus, they have a campus radio station, they have a campus television station. So starting like second semester of my freshman year, I was on the campus TV station, started doing a sports radio talk show on the campus uh, radio station. Uh, and then going into my sophomore year, I started getting internships first at the local NBC in Lansing and then the local Fox in Lansing. And that's, that's market like 120. So those are much smaller markets. And the good news with those is that it allows you to do a little more hands-on work in those smaller markets, as opposed to coming to a big market like New York, LA or Chicago. Uh, you don't get to do as much hands-on type work. And for example, like my first day as an intern at Fox, the sports guy called in sick and I ended up doing the sports that night as an intern, my first day on the job. They had me voice a two minute voiceover package for the sports cast that night. Wow. And I went ahead and did that and they were impressed. Uh, obviously it was stuff that I had learned how to do in class. So I just applied what I learned in class in the real world. And they ended up hiring me my senior year as the weekend sports anchor for Fox. So I was in college and already had a job. So it was kind of wild how it all got started. And then uh, that kind of led to the next job, the next job after that. But 
um, yeah, so when you're picking your school and you want to be at a place that they have some resources for you on campus, whether it's newspaper, radio, television, uh, communications departments and whatnot, and then the ability to go and do some internships, which are usually put together from the school itself. So uh, thankfully, I was blessed to be able to have all those things at my disposal and took advantage of those opportunities. And it was, it was very pivotal in helping me get to where I am today. Yeah, absolutely. I always say that everything happens for a reason. So, I mean, you know, just going to Michigan State, taking advantage of those opportunities, it definitely, you know, helped you in a lot of the internships, which I have a lot of questions about. I'm currently in my first internship right now this summer um, in, in New York at MSG. So, that's oh, nice, exciting. man. Yeah, thank That's you. That's great. Thank yeah, you. I mean, and again, what I tell people when they go for their internships is <clears throat> the internship is all in what you make of it. Yeah. So if you're very proactive and hands-on and willing to help and do whatever, then the internship is going to be much more beneficial and you're going to learn so much more and take so much more from it uh, as opposed to just showing up, clocking in, clocking out and, yep. you know, not really bringing anything to the table. So, um, you know, you get a chance to do that here in New York, covering all the teams. Uh, I'm sure there's plenty of good opportunities. And I think that uh, I think that's great for you. Yeah. And I mean, you know, just just being from New York alone too, so many opportunities, just, you know, 45 minutes away, just uh, not yeah. that bad of a commute. So no, nah, man, that's uh, what it's all about, dude. That's what definitely, it's all about. definitely always trying to network. You know what I mean? Yeah. So. Well, and, and that's the other thing I tell internships, you know, in this business, sometimes it's, it's not even sometimes most of the time, it's not what you know, it's who you know. Exactly. So yeah. The more, the more you network, the more you, you know, make good impressions on people. They're like, okay, yeah, I know him. Yep. 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 And you know, it's a very small, even though it seems like it's a huge industry, it's very small word travels fast. So uh, if you can make those connections and do those type of things, you're going to be that much better off for in the long run. Yeah. I appreciate that. So as I mentioned, I'm a sports media and PR major at URI. So, I mean, again, I feel like I've really gotten uh, involved in really my hands dirty um, in this program by, you know, just kind of getting involved as much as possible. Obviously, I have this podcast, which I started, um, radio and television, broadcasting, commentary, writing articles, live tweeting, a little bit of everything, honestly, a little bit of on-air television. So, you know, I feel like the most difficult decision is, you know, as I approach graduation or as anyone approaches graduation, what you're going to do within that major, what you're going to do within that industry. So for you, I'm really curious how you chose TV and on-air anchoring with so many. Yeah. I mean, it was one of those things where, um, I did radio I, and I have even done radio later in my career, um, as well as kind of a supplement to my TV work, but I just fell in love with the, you know, the, when the, when that red light comes on on the camera and you're alive and you got to get on and start talking and doing voiceovers and all that stuff. I just fell in love with it. And it's one of those things that, you know, when people say you don't know until you know, and once I knew like that was it. But, you know, you might try TV and find that you like radio better or like newspaper better. I mean, uh, everybody's going to go down a different path in terms of what they feel like they're most comfortable with or what they really enjoy more. So <clears throat> for TV, that was really the biggest part of it uh, was just that rush that comes from being live on camera. Uh, obviously, there's some negative sides to that, too, because if you have a bad day and you mess up, everybody knows about it. Everybody that's watching can see uh, you having a bad day firsthand. Um, but thankfully those days are few and far between. And, um, but yeah, man, there's, as I tell people, there's just nothing like it. Yeah, absolutely. I, I don't have much experience with TV. I do plan on actually interning, uh, in the fall when I return for my senior year with one of the stations in Providence. So I know they have nice. ABC six there. They have a couple of other stations. So definitely well, I'm actually in the middle of those applications. Yeah. Yeah. And Providence is a smaller market. So hopefully they allow you to do a few more things there, make, make the internship a little more hands-on for you, which would be very beneficial. Yeah, for sure. And it's all about building up the resume in the end too. So no question about it, buddy. No yep. question about it. So um, next question I have for you is just, you know, right out of college, as you alluded to before, you ended a job um, with WJBK in Detroit um, and then YWSYM in East Lansing. Yeah, so Lansing um, was first and then I went down to Detroit, yes. Yep. So how, you know, how did these jobs earlier in your career um, in this environment, you know, where things can be so high pressure, fast paced, how did they, you know, prepare you best for the future? Well, I mean, it's, it's one of those things where you learn a little something from every job that you're at. I mean, even going back to when I was an intern, uh, you make some mistakes along the way and you just hope that you're, 
you become better at what you do by the time you get to the next level. And I made a huge jump going from market, you know, 118, whatever it was, all the way to market nine at the time. So you're jumping 109 markets. And obviously the pressure went up with that. The expectations went up with that. Uh, I was doing some producing, some reporting and anchoring at JBK in Detroit for three years. Uh, so I was kind of, uh, you know, a slash player, if you will, doing a little bit of everything. They could kind of plug and play me wherever they needed me that day, which was nice for them. It gave them somebody who's, you know, versatile and can provide a little bit of everything. Um, so, but again, knowing how to produce, knowing how to write, I did a lot of shooting and lancing video work with the camera. Um, you know, all those skills helped, you know, get me to Detroit. And then, you know, I kind of honed those skills. And, you know, the, the flip side to that is because you know how to do all those things, you can appreciate what a photographer is going through out on a story. You can appreciate what a producer is doing when they're crashing, trying to make deadline to get a story on the air. Uh, you can appreciate all those things because you went ahead and have done them yourself. So that also gives you kind of like a, a well-rounded look at the industry as a whole, having done so many different jobs within it. So I think that also uh, was very pivotal in helping me get to where I am today, just having all those little experiences along the way. Yeah, absolutely. And like every place that you ended at was one step closer to getting, you know, a big job. You picked up a different skill. You made another connection. And I, I always say, too, like, it's so, it's so crazy how in this industry, too, how one small connection can take you so far. Um, yes. You know, that, that's another thing that I just, I can't believe. And, you know, I guess going off of that, like, you're originally from Michigan. So was it kind of crazy when you were covering some of the big teams in Detroit, like, you know, the Red Wings, the Tigers? Pistons, you know, yeah, man. I Pistons, mean, one, yeah. of, one, of my, one of my favorite moments or one of the favorite moments of my career was when I was in the locker room in 04 when the Pistons won the NBA championship. And, you know, champagne was flying. And it was they've been my favorite team since I was seven years old. And then you're yeah. in there uh, covering the team and doing all the interviews. And it, it was definitely a pinch me like, wow, this is unbelievable <laughs> uh, type moment. But, yeah, I mean, for 10 years, I covered the teams uh, with Fox Sports Detroit flying on the team plane. Uh, having a great relationship with the athletes and coaches and managers, and, uh, you know, it, it was an unforgettable experience. And, you know, you talk about something not feeling like work uh, when you're covering all your favorite teams uh, for work and flying with them on the plane and staying at the team hotel and doing all those things. Uh, it, it was, it was pretty remarkable. So uh, looking back at that point in my career always makes me smile when I think about all the incredible moments I had you know, during those 10 years. Yeah, absolutely. And that was actually my next question. You know, you just alluded to, you know, working at Fox Sports Detroit and then moving on to uh, Fox Sports One, which I believe was the launch of that. So it was. I was yeah. part of the original cast in August 2013 when they launched. Which is so what, crazy. what was that experience like? I know you worked on Fox Sports Live, MLB, Whip Around. Inside yeah, the well, it, it was a little bit different because when you're you're going from an established entity to a startup, you know, you're trying to make a, a good first impression, not only with your coworkers who, you know, they hired, you know, several hundred people uh, who are all coming in from all over the country to help launch this thing together. So it was kind of cool that we're all coming in at the same level, uh, meeting everybody for the first time. And, you know, you kind of had this sense of camaraderie that we were building this thing from the ground up, which is a very unique thing to have in this industry, because most places you go to MSG networks or ABC seven here in New York, I mean, these are, you know, places that have been around for, you know, dozens of years. So um, having that experience was very cool. Uh, and also, you know, you're trying to make a good first impression on the viewers because there's a lot of pressure when you're launching a new network, people are watching, what's this all about? So you gotta be on your P's and Q's. And that part of it was um, a very unique um, experience to have to go through in my career. Uh, and plus you're doing it at a national level because it was Fox's answer to ESPN. Uh, since that time, they've obviously gone in a much different direction where it went from being, a, you know, it was more of a highlight based channel to now it's more of a talking heads based uh, channel. So which is why once they had a kind of a change in direction for the network, I had to pivot um, and find a place where my services were a little bit more, uh, not appreciated, but a little bit more um, kind of fit better, I, I guess I should say. And that's how I ended up here at ABC7 in New York back in the fall of 2016. So coming up on my six year anniversary already, which is pretty wild how fast the time has gone. Uh, but it's been, it's been a heck of a journey to get to this point, I can tell you that. Yeah, that's crazy. Again, everyone has a different, you go on LinkedIn, everyone has a different story of how they get to where they are. Everyone and that's the whole thing. And, and yeah. that's what I tell when I do podcasts or I speak to classes 
uh, whether in person or on Zoom. I mean, you know, you never, you know, much like in today's Instagram world, you never want to be comparing yourself to other people right. because everybody's got a different path on how they got to where they got to. And when you start saying, oh, well, I should be here right now, or I should be here right now based on what this person has done. I mean, it, that's just not realistic. I mean, you're, you're going to get to where you're supposed to get to the, your own way that you're supposed to get to, uh, get to it. So uh, you never want to fall into that trap of looking where other people at at your age or, you know, at this point in college. I mean, as long as you know you're doing the best that you can and you have a goal in mind and the direction that you want to go in, that's all you should be focusing on. Uh, no more, no less. Yeah, Absolutely. Sticking with those 10 years in Detroit before moving on to New York. So I know uh, you also served as a co-host for a talk radio show on Fox Sports Radio along with NBA player. Yeah, that was, yeah, that was in, uh, in Los Angeles. That, oh, that was yeah. long when I was there for, yeah, when I was there with Fox Sports 1, I hosted a uh, simul, or a simulcast, um, a uh, simulated, uh, not simulated, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, like a nationwide radio show, Sunday afternoons um on fox sports radio which was great and it was uh you know radio was a nice medium we were on for four hours a day because you had a chance to give your opinions on things uh, uh it's a little more free-flowing a little much more relaxed as opposed to me as opposed to me giving my three-minute presentation um on abc every night doing the sports cast so it, it allowed me a chance to kind of express maybe even a little more personality a few more opinions um, which is what I love about radio. And, you know, if I had a chance to do another talk radio show, I would definitely be open to it. Um, Cause I, frankly, I, I really enjoyed it. Uh, but to me, it just doesn't have the same cachet that TV does. Right. But to each their own. Yeah. And also in those 10 years winning an Emmy, you know, for best sports anchor in 2009, can you talk about that experience as well? You know, that's, I feel like a dream for any journalist. Yeah, it definitely was, man. It's, it's one of those things where, you know, you never want to do things for awards Right. But when you get rewarded for the work that you've done and people kind of take notice of it, um, that definitely uh, makes it a little extra special, kind of makes you feel like it's all worth it. And uh, yeah, that one, I got a few of those. Uh, they're, they're on my mantle at home. And, uh, you know, I look at those and smile and think about, you know, what, what great accomplishments those were. And um, it's nice to be recognized by your peers uh, for the work that you've done, to say the least. Yeah, it's crazy. And, and 10 years is such a short time in, in terms of life. And you were able to accomplish so many things that, you know, some others can't accomplish at all throughout their entire career. So congratulations on that. Um, Thank you, Adam. And transitioning to New York, as you alluded to before. So in 2016, you came to New York and you became the sports anchor of WABC TV on weeknights and Saturday mornings. So this was obviously a big transition for you coming from Detroit and from Michigan all the way to probably one of the media capitals in the world in New York. So I'm curious if you could just talk about, you know, this process, how you were able to, you know, tackle the pressure of working in the media and also working in New York. Yeah, I mean, I think it helped coming from, had I gone from Detroit right to New York, it probably would have felt a little different, but having gone from LA, which is the second largest media market, um, also doing work at a network level, uh, on a national level, um, it, it kind of made the transition to New York uh, a little easier, if I'm being honest, because you already are telling yourself, well, I've already done this at a national level. Now I'm just going back to a local level, even though it's New York and it doesn't necessarily feel like local television. Um, but it definitely gave me the peace of mind and the confidence knowing that I could do this job. And, you know, New York is, I grew up in Detroit where, you know, we have rabid fan bases for all four major sports. Uh, New York is like that, just kind of on steroids. And the fact that you have, you know, multiple fan bases for each sport, where well, Mets and Yankees, you know, uh, Knicks and Nets, Rangers, Islanders, Devils, uh, Jets and Giants. So you, you're very cognizant of all of these different fan bases that are watching your sports cast. So you have to be very careful to not, you know, lean one way or the other. I always tell people uh, when they ask me like, well, what New York teams do you root for? And I always say, well, on TV, I root for all the teams because the minute you start taking sides, uh, if, if all of a sudden I'm pro Mets and anti Yankee, I mean, all of a sudden you start hearing it from the other fan bases, whether it's on Twitter or Instagram, Facebook, uh, anywhere on social media, trust me, uh, as I found out, these fans will find you uh, and send you DMs and, uh, and make their opinions known about your work. So you just have to be very aware of that and sensitive to those things. Um, but to be honest with you, that, that's been the fun part about it. I mean, I'm, I'm a sports fan myself, so I can appreciate the passion that these fan bases have for their teams. And like I said, coming from Detroit, um, where I grew up with the, you know, plus we have two Big Ten 
at Michigan, Michigan State. I mean, I mean, it's it's crazy sports growing up in Michigan. So now it's there's just more teams here in New York, but it's the same level of passion. So I think that helped kind of prepare me for this transition. Uh, and, it, and it's certainly been a lot of fun. I wish our teams were winning more. Uh, I thought for sure by going on, uh, by the time I got to year six, which is where I'm at right now, I would have already covered probably three or four championship parades, but uh, that has not been the case. So yeah. maybe, uh, maybe the Mets or Yankees will do, do something about that this fall. We'll have to wait and see. Well, we came close last week and I mean, being an intern there, it was, it was definitely hectic. Things have yep. definitely calmed down this week now that, uh, They've been eliminated from playoff contention. Yeah, we thought the Rangers might give us a surprise, but it wasn't. I was, I was hoping for it. I was hoping yeah, for That would have been awesome. Yeah, I'm being a Yankees fan right now. I, I couldn't be happier, so we'll as see. Well, as well, you should be, man. It's, it's, it's going to be a fun summer of baseball here. Summer hasn't even officially started yet. We got two of the teams with the two best records in baseball, and um, it, it's, it's, it's going to be a great time to be a baseball fan here in the city. And uh, I predicted – um, right the week before the season started on ABC seven, I predicted we were going to have a subway series. So wouldn't that be something if that prediction comes true, it's certainly looking good right now on uh, June 14th, uh, but we'll have to wait and see how this all plays out. Yeah. It's another 120 or so 110. Long way to go. Yeah. yeah long way to go. L long way. So I'm, I'm always curious, a couple more questions for you. I'm always curious, you know, uh, the day in the life, I guess of the job, you know, so, I'm sure there's no day that's not like another at ABC seven, but just going into, you know, the field, no pun intended, uh, going into the field and, you know, recording high school games and, you know, getting B roll and then bringing it back. And then basically recording all of this footage throughout the day, only to talk on the air for three minutes. It's a crazy day that a lot of people don't know about. So if you could just, you know, dive in a little bit and talk about kind of the day in the life at ABC7. Yeah, I mean, I don't go out on stories a ton. Um, we have a reporter, Sam Ryan, that goes out on a, on a lot of stories and does a lot of the interviews. But for big games, uh, like for the Rangers playoff games, uh, you know, I'll be there doing interviews. I'll do my show live, whether it's from the Garden or opening day or at City Field, Yankee Stadium for the Subway Series. We'll be back at the baseball stadiums. Um, so, you know, that that right there mixes things up a little bit. For, but for the most part, I'm predominantly office based. And I come in and I go over the what we're going to talk about in the show with my producer. Um, and then he usually writes out a good majority of the show. I'll tweak some things. I'll write some things myself. Um, you know, what I always tell people, you want to have your copy read like you wrote it yourself, because you're the one that's saying it. So for example, if I wrote something for you to read out loud, and you read it out loud, it wouldn't sound like you because it wasn't your writing, right? Mm -hmm. So when you write something yourself, and then you read it out loud, it sounds much more natural because you're reading your own writing. So when my producers, um, you know, Joe and Alex, when they write stuff, uh, you know, I'll tweak it to where it sounds like me and doesn't sound like them. So I'm changing verbiage around, um, you know, switching words around, um, you know, just, just tinkering with a little bit just to make it sound more like me. So when you're watching me on camera, it sounds very conversational, which has always been my style. I don't want to feel like I'm just up there reading the sports and bop, 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 bop. Like you want to be engaging. You want to be, um, you know, using little, little sayings and little things that you like to mix into the sports cast that just make it seem a little more warm, if you will, and welcoming, uh, a little more engaging, a little more personal. So those are, those are little touches that I like to make along the way, but everybody has their own style. Everybody has their own way that they write. Everybody has their own way they insert jokes or ad lib things. Um, and that's all something that comes with practice and reps and everything else. So, um, but yeah, that's, that's part of the fun. That's, that's, that's some of the fun part of the job is being creative and putting your own little twist on a show and how you can make it more interesting for the audience. So we do that both at six o'clock for the six o'clock news and the 11 o'clock news. So I do that Monday through Friday. I'm on twice a day, uh, about three, three and a half minutes per show, uh, six o'clock and 11 o'clock. And yeah, I mean, right now we're getting ready to watch the Mets and Yankee games and then figure out what highlights are going to be excuse me, what highlights are going to be in the show tonight at 11. And then, uh, yeah, we'll go over what the rest of the show is going to entail. Uh, at six o'clock, we had a, we ended the show with the fun video of Joey Votto making the TikTok video with that young uh, Arizona Diamondback fan. So we call that a kicker where you end the show with like a funny lighthearted video uh, that the anchors can all laugh at and we can joke around with. So we did that at six o'clock and we'll look for something uh, like that to end the show at 11 o'clock, whether it's a play of the night or something like that. 
So, um, but yeah, man, I mean, you're, you're kind of like putting a puzzle together every day, like figuring out how you want to set the show up and what, what you're going to lead with, what you're going to end with, what's going to be in the middle, what sound bites you're going to use, what highlights you're going to use. So that's all part of the creativity that we have every day in putting these shows together. Yeah, that creative mindset to really tell a story and, and you only have three minutes to do it and it's on air, it's live. I can't imagine. I mean, it definitely comes with practice, but it's yeah. crazy and the amount of work that goes in just leading up to six or 11. Yeah, I mean, people so. think you just show up and read. I mean, there's a lot more that goes into it. <laughs> a lot more. I, I, yeah, I can promise you. Yeah, for sure. So I have a few rapid fire questions to uh, All right, let's do it. end it. So uh, yeah, let's get right into it. Who is your you know, biggest role model or inspiration in the industry growing up? Growing up, uh, the guy who's currently the radio voice of the Detroit Lions, a guy by the name of Dan Miller, who's still a sports director at JBK, Fox 2 in Detroit. He was my mentor. I met him when I was just a kid in Lansing. Uh, and then he was key in helping bring me down to Fox 2, where I produced for him and also anchored some shows alongside him. And to this day, he's still a guy that if I have questions about something in the industry, I'll call him or text him. Hey, should I do this? Should I do this? And he, he's a guy that I still lean on. And that's why mentors are so important. Even though you might meet them when you're young, you have those relationships throughout the course of your career. And there's still someone that you can lean on, even for me, 25 years into my career. Yeah, I definitely have a few professors here and there that have worked in the industry. Professors as well. Yeah, I have a couple yeah, we have that, that program. Come. So yeah. yeah, of course, of course. I have, I have one professor in particular that I'm going to zoom into her class on Thursday. Um, we have a great relationship and she helped me get that internship that launched my career. So I'm forever grateful to her. And whenever she asks me to come on and zoom to the kids at Michigan state, I go ahead and I do that, which is my way of kind of paying it forward, so to speak. Yeah. I also got to throw in there, Mike Breen too. He's, he's definitely an inspiration oh, for me. But. Mike Breen is Mike Breen is the best. I, I love Mike. He's, uh, yeah. as good as he is on TV, he's an even better person. I, that, that's the, that's the highest compliment you can give somebody. <laughs> I hope I can meet him someday. Uh, next question, your favorite sport or just event to cover? Ooh, boy, that's a good one. I'll tell you one that I still want to cover that I have yet to cover would be the Masters. Okay. Uh, that is still on my bucket list to get to Augusta. One of the coolest events I ever covered was when the Ryder Cup came to uh, Oakland Hills in Michigan back in 2004. Um, you know, Tiger and Phil and everybody, I mean, the whole world converging there. Uh, about 10 minutes more I grew up. Uh, seeing golf's best there um, was was really cool, but uh, that that's up there. The NBA Finals I've covered, March Madness, some Final Fours of Michigan State, um, some championship parades. Uh, yeah, man, I've I've been very blessed to cover some really really cool events. The U.S. Open here in New York was super fun to cover finally because I've been watching that my whole life. Um, but yeah, if I can one day make it down to the Masters, that would be a dream come true. Yeah, it's a dream. I mean, just to travel and see all these different places alone, I think that's every sports fan's dream. Oh, you know, yeah, man. I mean, you're, especially for you. I mean, things you've watched yeah. as a kid, and the next thing you know, you find yourself at this venue covering this event. It's, it's, exactly. it's, pretty, it's pretty cool. Yep, yep. Who is, you know, an athlete or a coach or someone, you know, you were a big fan of, you, you alluded to a few before, um, that, you know, you now have had the opportunity of meeting and talking that, you, you kind of, it's, it's a big flex for you. I met this person. I interviewed. <laughs> I mean, I've interviewed everybody from, you know, Magic Johnson to Tiger Woods to shoot Tony Hawk from the skateboarding world. Yep. Uh, you know, I, I've interviewed a, a lot of big time athletes, but for me, the one that I was starstruck the most was Isaiah Thomas, you know, growing up a Pistons fan. And uh, he's, he's always been my favorite player since I was a little kid. And when I finally had a chance to meet him and interview him, I mean, I, I won't lie to you, even though I was, shoot, 10, 12 years into my career, I was pretty nervous meeting him for the first time. Uh, and that's, that's another cool part of this job is you can still get little butterflies, you know, when you meet certain people or you're covering certain events or a certain game, uh, you know, makes you kind of feel like a kid again. And that was certainly one of those moments. I mean, I, I feel like I, I definitely have the butterflies, you know, even just like when I interview an athlete at my school who may, you know, may not have advanced to the professional level yet, but right. just kind of leading up to an, a, uh, an interview, it's kind of, you know, you have that feeling, you have that adrenaline flowing. Well, so look, man, that, that's when you know you're doing what you love to do, right? So yep. that just, uh, that just reaffirms that you've made the right decision for what you want to do with your life and your career. Yeah. Uh, two more questions for you. The biggest or most memorable, you know, game you've had the opportunity of covering or just being in the arena for? Oh, man. Oh, man. 
See, this is a good problem to have when you've covered so many uh, big games and big events and one doesn't stand out above the other. Uh, I, I'm going to be somewhat selfish here and say I was at the Michigan-Michigan State football game uh, this year in East Lansing. Michigan State came back to win. They were down by 16 points, came back to win in a top 10 matchup. Uh, 37 33 that was probably one of the coolest and best sporting events that I'd ever been to obviously being an alum uh, helped um, you know and, and also seeing Michigan State win the national championship in 2000 Morris Peterson uh, who was a star on that team and went on to star in the NBA for the Raptors uh, cut me off a little piece of the net that they cut down had around his neck cut off a piece of it and gave it to me and that's definitely one of my big uh, mementos from the career that I still have. Uh, it's now 22 years old, that little piece of the net, but I still have it. It's very cool. So much history. And it's crazy because when you're doing the job, you don't realize that you're experiencing history every single day. Yeah, and, and that's a good point. That's a good way to look at it, and especially like when you ask me, like, what's your favorite event? It's just like, boy, I mean, you know, it's, it's hard to even – uh, sit there and put it into perspective like that, because, you know, as you'll notice with your career, you know, you never want to say the games kind of run into each other, but, you know, you start covering so many games and so many different events. Uh, sometimes it's hard to separate the really great ones from the, from the others. Um, but yeah, man, I mean, I, I've been, like I said, very fortunate to see a lot of incredible things uh, either on the diamond, in the arena, on the court, on the ice. Um, and, and, you know, the longer you're in this business, you'll, you'll experience a lot of those yourself. Yeah. And the last question I have for you, you know, what is the best piece of advice you could give someone like myself, you know, entering the workforce, looking to maybe get into this industry and take on a similar path that you took? Uh, your two best abilities are your availability and your likability. Show up and be nice. That's the best advice I can give somebody because I've worked with a lot of people uh, for the most part during my career to this point who are incredible human beings. I've also worked with a few that are not. And those are the ones that tend to stand out. And those are the ones that tend to not have great careers because uh, I know it sounds so simple just to show up and be nice, but it's, it's so true. Um, people want somebody that's going to be there on time. They want somebody that's going to be there, you know, doing their job five days a week. And they want somebody that's going to show up and be, you know, do it with a smile and be nice to those around them and uh, be a good representation for the company that they work for. Um, again, it sounds so simple, but you'd be surprised how many people don't quite grasp uh, that part of the industry. Uh, as far as the X's and O's, if you will, um, getting an internship, making the most of it, um, you know, meeting people, uh, get, doing as many things as you can, writing, editing, shooting on the camera, um, practicing your reps, your run-throughs, doing highlights, uh, doing on-camera stuff, like, you know, just learn as much as you can, absorb it like a sponge, and I promise you, you will apply all of those skills at some point as your career unfolds. There it is right there. Ryan, thank you so much for taking the time again. I really appreciate it. And congratulations, you know, just on thank all of you, your man. success again. Um, I really look forward to seeing everything that you're going to accomplish. And, you know, I hope to be in touch as I. Hey, right back at you, buddy. This. I'm looking forward to doing this Zoom here in a couple of years. And we can talk about how far you've come. And we'll do, a, we'll do an update on you and see, uh, see where you're at. And uh, by all means, and I look forward to seeing you out at a, at a big time event here in person real soon. All right. Well, I appreciate it again. Absolutely.